Hey there, this is Neil Davis from Digital Cloud Training. In this series of short videos, I'm going to walk you through some practice exam questions from my AWS Certified Developer Associate Practice Exam course. And what I'm going to do is walk you through my thought process. So how do I go about working out which answer or answers are correct? And how do I work out which answers are definitely incorrect? And I've been doing IT examinations for over 20 years, so I've got quite a bit of experience and I want to try and use that to sort of teach you a few techniques so that when you go and sit your exam, you've got a much greater chance of success. So I hope you find it valuable. See you in the videos. This question says that every time an EC2 instance is launched, certain metadata about the instance should be recorded in a DynamoDB table. The data is gathered and written to the table by a Lambda function. What's the most efficient method of invoking the Lambda function? So we have an EC2 instance. Every time it's launched, we need to take some metadata about the instance. So information about the instance could be things like the IP address or the network interfaces that are attached, that kind of thing. And we're going to record that in a DynamoDB table. And we're going to invoke a Lambda function to do that. And the question really is, how does the Lambda function get invoked? So Think about it, your EC2 instance needs to be launched. So there's some kind of trigger. Maybe you go into the console, you launch an instance, or you use the CLI to launch an instance. Now, when that happens, something needs to cause your Lambda function to trigger. So what is that event? Now, again, straight away for me, it's making me think about CloudWatch events because I know that CloudWatch events are triggered by state changes in resources. And this sounds very much like a state change to me. An EC2 instance is being launched, that's a state change. Maybe it's been stopped and started, something like that. That's a state change. So that could be a event source that can trigger a Lambda function. So I like this option here, but let's now go and just see if we can discount the other options. So the other thing that might come up for you is alarm straight away. You're thinking about alarm. So let's start at the bottom here. We've got configured detailed monitoring on EC2 and create an alarm that triggers the Lambda function in initialization. Well, I think detailed monitoring is a little bit of a distractor here. That really just means that the information that's sent to CloudWatch is going to go every one minute versus five minutes. But there's nothing in detailed monitoring versus basic monitoring that's going to help you to trigger a Lambda function. And alarms will typically be about metrics. So you have a metric that's monitoring something like the CPU usage, or the memory usage, it goes over a certain threshold and then an alarm is triggered. But we're not necessarily monitoring any metrics here. We're just looking for when the instance is launched. That's not a metric, that's a state change. So the next one is create a cloud trail, trail alarm that triggers the Lambda function based on the run instances API action. Well, cloud trail certainly monitors API actions, but it doesn't have its own alarming function. So that doesn't sound like a good option to me. Now you can monitor CloudTrail events through CloudWatch, but you can't actually create an alarm in CloudTrail itself. So the next one is create a CloudWatch alarm that triggers the Lambda function based on log streams, indicating an EC2 state change in CloudWatch logs. So you know that with some services, you'll find a entry, a CloudWatch log group, and then you'll find entries in that log group. So Probably a Lambda function is a good example. You create a Lambda function and by default, it will create a log group and it will actually log events into that. But EC2 doesn't do that. So there is no cloud log group created by default. So there shouldn't be a log stream being created. So that doesn't look like a viable option to me. I also don't believe that CloudWatch alarms can be triggered based on log streams either. They're triggered based on metrics. So it's not going to search a log stream for some specific information and then trigger an event. So we're left with this one, create a CloudWatch event with an event pattern looking for EC2 state changes and a target set to use the Lambda function. That sounds good to me. Let's click check. And sure enough, that is the correct answer we can see up here. And we've got an explanation. And in the explanation here, you can see an example of an event pattern in CloudWatch events where we have the service EC2. It's looking for the event type EC2 instance state change notification. 
and it's looking for specific states in this example, so running. So when something changes state to running, it will then trigger a Lambda function. So that's that, let's move on to the next question. So question six says that a developer is setting up a code update to Amazon ECS using code deploy. The developer needs to complete the code update quickly. Which of the following deployment types should the developer use? So we've got Amazon ECS and we're deploying code to ECS using code deploy. And we need to do so quickly. So what is the fastest option? Now, when you think about code deploy and putting a change or a deployment into place very quickly, I'll often think of in place. The problem with in place in this example is we have Amazon ECS. In place doesn't work for ECS or AWS Lambda. So that's actually not gonna be an option. We've then got Canary and we've also got Linear. So I'm looking at these two and saying, well, hang on a second. These are not actually ECS deployment types. These are about how you shift your traffic. So they're not the deployment type. You might use a deployment type like Blue Green and then you can shift your traffic using Canary and Linear. So actually the only two deployment types here are in place and blue green, and I know it can't be in place, so there's really no other option. I didn't even need to know the correct answer here. I could work out that all three of these were definitely wrong based on that information, just knowing that this is a traffic shifting type as, as is linear, and that this is not allowed, the in place deployment type is not allowed for ECS or Lambda. So it's gotta be blue green. Let's choose check. And sure enough, that was correct and it gives us a bit more information. So you can see that Canary and Linear are both traffic shifting options.